Hi guys, going to look today at having a bit of fun with some numbers, some sort of straightforward activities that you can get your children to do at home that don't need massive amounts of supervising. So once they've been shown how to do some of these things, they should be able to get on with it themselves once we've um, shown them a few ideas. So for example, 5 times 4 equals 20. So we take this simple timetable and what we want to do is draw the children's attention to the three numbers that are involved here and how they are linked. Basically the question we want to ask is, if I know that 5 times 4 is 20, what else do I know? Okay, so hopefully most of you will recognise pretty quickly that if I know this, I should also know this. This is one of the related facts. And from that, we look at what we call the inverse, the relationship to the inverse, which basically means that this is linked to division. So the multiplication and division are very much linked. We are going to start to hopefully draw out this kind of meaning, as well as this. So you might start with that focus. Really good question to ask children is to look at what's the same about all of these and what's different. So clearly we've got the same numbers, but the order can be different. Noticing that in this case, the 20 appears in the division calculations at the start with the multiplication we have at the end, just in terms of how we've presented it. So yeah, one of the first things you want to draw attention to is that we have what we call buy one and get three free, is one way of uh, explaining that to children. So if I know this, there are three immediate facts that I should be able to link to straight away. Okay, so that would be a starting point. Once you've got that and done that with maybe a couple of other times tables, it might be six times three is 18, explore the same thing. Notice that we're taking the answer away here. We're not worried about what the table answer is, we're providing that. We're then looking to make connections with other bits of maths. Okay, so that would be a sort of step one. Then what I would encourage you to try and do is to get children to be creative. What you're trying to do is get them to make connections to other bits of maths. So, for example, done it in different colours here. 5 times 4 is 20, using our original example. This is what we produced um, just a moment ago and we discussed. Again, ask them how do they know that? Get a calculator out to prove it. Does it work? Uh, and what we're doing is drawing attention to those three numbers and that they are sort of linked. What we can then start to do is experiment a little bit. So once they're quite secure with that, we might want to look at, okay, what happens if I double one of the numbers in here? So I've got five times four is 20. What if I double this and make it 10? How does that impact on the answer? Again, take the thread away of the calculating if you want in the beginning they can use a calculator and what I want to sort of start to draw attention to is the fact that when I double one of the numbers the answer doubles itself and I think well if it happens there what if I double this one instead and I start to notice the same thing quite interesting then why why does that happen what does it look like you might want to draw it. These make sort of thinking of area, you might want to draw that if you had squared paper and actually look at the area would be the same. So there's a link to area as well. Um, what happens if I double both the numbers? So I double five and I double four. From my original answer, I've actually gone four times bigger. So again, why? So starting to play around with experiment there's no right and wrong answers, we're just trying to find stuff out, we're trying to see what if I do this, what happens if I do this. The other element of this in terms of place value is that children should start to realise, again, using a calculator, not a problem here. What happens if I do 50 times 4, or 5 times 40, or 500 times 4, or 5 times 400? Type those in the calculator and... When you've got your answers, start 
start to explore what you notice. Okay? So again, we can start to generalize about bigger numbers quite quickly. And one other idea, if for those who are really brave and want to get into decimals, over here we doubled. What actually happens if we half one of the numbers? Okay? So that kind of a question might look quite daunting sometimes with the decimal on it, but actually these are methods and ways that we can approach maths in a bit of a different way. If I had 2.5 times 4, I can actually double this to make it 5 times 4 and half if we get the answers, that kind of thing. But drawing children's attention to it, if I half it, put it in the calculator, what do I get? And similarly. So, a few things to start with. Um, what we would hopefully start to see the children doing then is developing that even further. Uh, they really do like the challenge when they start to put lots of zeros on to each of them and make really, really big numbers very, very quickly. And this is all just coming from one fact. So all you need is a bit of paper, a few pens or even a pencil and they can just go for it. A bit of a mind map of some of these ideas. So just to stretch their thinking, go beyond just some times tables. They could make quite a nice poster out of this. Um, and yeah, you might want to do the same for a few different ones. Nice activity that could last 15 to 20 minutes and quite independent. So yeah, worth a try. Thanks for your time. Good luck.